Dave McCann here with another question from your Hasten Harris Math SL textbook. We're looking at chapter 9D, question 7, and we're looking at applications of the sine rule and the cosine rule. In this question, we're told about a tower which is 42 meters high, and it stands on top of a hill. From a point that is some distance from the base of the hill, the angle of elevation to the top of the tower is 13.2 degrees. That's the angle of elevation. The angle of elevation to the bottom of the tower is 8.3 degrees, and we want to find the height of the hill. All right, well, let's draw a sketch. We're told about a tower. It looks more like a Christmas tree, but we'll call it a tower. It's on top of a hill, which has a base, and some distance from the base of the hill, we have a point. From this point, there's an angle of elevation to the top of the tower and an angle of elevation to the base of the tower. For an angle of elevation, we ought to have a horizontal, and that'll go all the way to the base of the hill. And from that base, we can go straight up to the top of the hill. And so this ought to be a 90 degree angle here. Now we're told that the angle of elevation to the bottom of the tower is 8.3 degrees. Meanwhile, we're also told that the angle of elevation to the top of the tower is 13.2 degrees. And from here, we'll take a look at what we can do. Now, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and clean up my diagram. I'm going to uh, delete that hill and delete this tower so that I'm left with just a nice triangle. I'm told also in the uh, question that the height of the tower was 42 meters, and what I want to know was the height of the hill H. So taking a look at this triangle, we need to find this segment of the triangle, but uh, to find that, what I'd like to know is more about this right angle triangle. The only thing that I know about it right now is one of the angles. To be able to find a side, I'm going to need to know another one of the sides. Since this side is shared by both the triangle that I'm interested in and a triangle that I know information about a side, I'm going to choose to try and find the length of this side, and I'll call the length of that side x. Once I find x using the upper triangle, I ought to be able to find h using the lower triangle. To find x in the upper triangle, I need to know a little bit more about the angles, and so I'm going to try and fill out information about these angles. First, I know that this whole arc is 13.2 degrees, but this segment of it is only 8.3, which means the remaining segment must be the difference between 13.2 and 8.3. That's 13.2 take away 8.3, and that should be 4.9 degrees. So now I have one of the angles in the triangle, and it happens to be the angle across from the side. That's handy for cosine rule, that's handy for sine rule. If I want to find the length of this side, though, what I really want is this angle here. To get this angle here, I'm going to try and find this angle from that angle from this triangle. Let's go step by step. First off, the upper angle in the lower triangle is the third angle in the triangle. I already know 90 degrees, and I know 8.3 degrees. So to find this unknown angle, that unknown angle along with 8.3 and 90 degrees must be 180. So it must be 180, take away 90, take away 8.3, which leaves me with 81 0.7 degrees. Now, for the other half of the angle, these two together must be 180 degrees, so the upper half of it must be 180 take away 81.7, and that leaves me with 98.3 degrees. Now what I have is two out of the three angles in the upper triangle, and the sum of the three angles must again equal 180 degrees, so the unknown one must be 180, take away 
take away 4.9, and that leaves me with 76.8 degrees. So I was able to fill out the angles in this triangle, and as a result, I can now use the sine rule to find the length x. The sine rule in general says that a side divided by the angle opposite, the sine of the angle opposite to it, so side x divided by the sine of 76.8 degrees, is equal to any other side, such as 42 degrees, divided by the sine of the angle across from it. In this case, 49 degrees is opposite 42 degrees, 4.9 degrees. To solve this for x, I'm going to multiply across by the sine of 78.6 degrees, and that'll give me the sine of 76.8 degrees times 42 over the sine of 4.9 degrees. Neither of these angles are major angles on the unit circle, so I'll turn to my calculator to solve this, and I'll find that x is 283 meters to three significant digits. All right, now that I have this angle, or sorry, this side, this helps me because the lower triangle is a right angle triangle. So I could use sine rule, I could use cosine rule to help me find this height h, or I could just use SOHCAHTOA, and that's going to be quite a bit simpler. Since I know both angles in this right angle triangle, I could use sine or cosine to solve this, I couldn't use tangent at the moment because I don't know the other side. I could find the side first and use tangent, but that'll be a longer solution. So I'm going to avoid doing that and instead choose to use sine. Sine of an angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, I'm interested in this side h, which is opposite to the angle 8.3. So my opposite side will be h, and my angle will be 8.3 degrees. Finally, I'll divide by the hypotenuse, which in this case was my formerly unknown side x, which I now know to be 283 meters. To solve this for h, I'm going to multiply 283 to the other side, and I'll get h is equal to 283 sine of 8.3 degrees. 8.3 degrees is not a major angle on the unit circle. I'll have to use my calculator in degree mode. And when I plug that into my calculator, I find that h is 40.9 meters to three significant figures. And that completes my solution.